A silver cross shines in the sun at the summit of Mount Tumbledown. It's one of the thousand reminders of the war in 1982, scattered all over the hills beyond Stanley. A fierce battle took place here, shortly before the end of the conflict. But despite the vast amount of remains from the fighting still here, the battlefield has never been surveyed, until now. I was here a couple of years ago doing some, some work on um, an Argentine artillery battery and um, having then got in touch with Tony we realised there was a synchronicity to the work that we were doing and we could kind of collaborate really usefully and conscious of the 40th anniversary we felt that the time was now, the time was right to, um, to do this and we wanted to look at various dynamics. We wanted to see what technologies would work, we wanted to see what survey techniques would work and then we wanted to kind of map out the, the material legacy of, of the battle. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them. It was also an opportunity for returning veterans, themselves members of the team, to come to terms with the war and the psychological effects it had had on them. After a long day of surveying, Veteran Scott Scars laid wreaths at the top of Mount Tumbledown to remember their fallen comrades. I've worked in the clinical arena in the army for over 27 years, so to bring people who've been affected by the service, be it physically and psychologically, from the war, back to this place and actually um, relive some of that, confront some of their fears, uh, rather than do it clinically in a remote room, you know, which hasn't these kind of experiences here of kind of touching, feeling and smelling the experience. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. It's something I've never done before, so it's, it's, been, it's been great, yeah. Well, I gather over the years, many people have come back here to revisit battle sites that they were involved in. You know, when the lads in question were 19 years of age, so on this occasion to give people what I'd call a prolonged exposure to that, whilst it's been difficult at times and, and it's been very emotive for the two individuals we have with us, I would say at this point, coming towards the end of the project, uh, they would agree that they feel significantly better as a result because they've had that opportunity to not come here just once, but nearly every day for the duration of the project. So the response for them has been, I think, very varied, but for us from an academic perspective, you know, we know about the military, we know about the ammunition and the guns and everything used, but we weren't the ones using it. So the most amazing thing for me has been seeing how they have kind of surveyed the landscape and explained the plots and the points and why we found ammunition where we found it and how that would be a, you know, outlook post. And all of that coming together is a vast amount of knowledge which really helps paint a picture of the battle. Right from the very outset, um, we decided that this has to be a community project. Um, longer term, this is how the project will sustain itself and endure. We want people to be thinking about conflict heritage. We want people to be thinking and, and thinking about how they might protect and preserve the heritage that is actually up here and, and, and exposed. There are still a lot of remains related to 1982, but they are disappearing. Um, shell, shell holes are, are, are healing over. Uh, metal objects are rusting, um, items have been taken away as souvenirs, fortifications are collapsing. And the idea of the project is to create an audit of that material so it can be properly managed and not necessarily preserved in aspic, but certainly be maintained into the future as an important resource.